Today, we are talking about friends and God. We are, we are the religious society of friends. We are a faith community. And what that means is that faith is at the center of our community. Despite that, I find this the hardest of the presentations to give because my understanding of the divine um, does not lend itself to words very well. And I think every friend would describe their faith and the faith of those sitting next to them on, on the pews um, slightly differently. But I think there are three kind of fundamental principles that underlie um, Quakerism. Um, the first is there is a God. Um, the divine has always been, is now, and will always be. And the divine is everywhere, specifically including within every human being. There is that of God in every person. So that's, that's kind of the first, the first principle. The second principle is that we can experience the divine without any intermediary. Every one of us can experience God directly. Um, and the third is that we understand the divine through a process of continuing revelation. Um, and that is true for us as individuals. It is also true for us as the religious society of friends, as, as a community. Um, we learn and grow as we continue to have encounters with God. So on some level, these are all kind of the same thing. And what they boil down to is that it is the experience that is important. Words don't matter that much because words can never express truly what's going on. Um, it's like, you know, explaining what sweet means to someone who has never had sugar or, or anything else. You just, it's impossible. Um, and speaking, speaking from my, for, for myself, I know that God exists because I have felt God's presence in my life. And sometimes that is very personal. And it's when I'm, if I'm lying in bed late at night, anxious, and all of a sudden I feel a presence that is loving and reassuring and is enveloping me. That is an experience of the divine. I also feel that presence in community. So in a gathered meeting for worship, um, I can feel a spirit settling on the room like a warm comforter that covers us, that envelops us, that brings us together. And I know that I'm not the only person in the room experiencing it, that it is, it is God coming to the community together at the same time. I'd like to share a few quotes from George Fox, who is considered the founder um, of Quakerism. The first was what George Fox 
called an opening. Um, and in contemporary vocabulary, we might call it an epiphany or, or kind of a conceptual breakthrough. It is one of those experiences where all of a sudden a new universe opens up and one's life is changed. Um, so George Fox was looking for answers to his spiritual questions and he was traveling around England and he was speaking to ministers, to priests, to learned people, um, and he couldn't find the answers that, that he was yearning for. Um, and one day as he, as he was traveling, as he was walking, um, he found himself alone on a hill, and this is his, um, this is his description in his journal of, of what happened, and he says, when all my hopes in them, that is the, the ministers and the learned people, and in all men were gone, so that I had nothing outwardly to help me, nor could I tell what to do, then, oh, then I heard a voice which said, there is one, even Christ Jesus, that can speak to thy condition. And when I heard it, my heart did leap for joy, and this I knew experimentally. In 17th century English, experimentally, the word experimentally means what we now know. We now, the word we use now for that word is experientially. Um, so what, what Fox is saying is that the divine can speak to, well, in this case, the divine spoke directly to him, that the divine can speak directly to all of us and that it is this experience um, that matters more than anything else. Later on, Fox gave what, what could be the um, kind of prime directive for Quakers, the, uh, the, the mission, um, of the Religious Society of Friends. And Fox says, be patterns, be examples in all countries, places, islands, nations, wherever you come, that your carriage and life may preach among all sorts of people and to them. Then you will come to walk cheerfully over the world, answering that of God and everyone. So again, we have the idea that there is that of God in everyone. And this mandate from Fox, the more you think about it, the harder it is. Because Fox is not saying, search for that of God in everyone. He is not saying, look for that of God in everyone. He is taking for granted that you do that. And the mandate is, to answer that of God and everyone. It is a, it is a very active um, mandate. And if that's not hard enough, we're supposed to do it cheerfully. Um, and then the third, and this is actually from the Journal of Margaret Fell, who is another very important early friend that we will talk about when we talk about history. And she is quoting a sermon that George Fox gave. And what resonated with her, what truly spoke to her more than anything else that he said was um, when Fox said, you will say Christ saith this and the apostles say this, but what canst thou say? Art thou a child of the light and hast thou walked in the light and what thou speakest is it inwardly from God? So once again, we have the principle that it is what God reveals to us individually and collectively um, that is important, um, which is not to say that scripture is unimportant. 
But what truly matters is, is our experience, our expression of that experience, and the way that experience informs our lives. Um, so that, that we preach through our lives. Um, that it's, the words don't matter nearly as much. So there's a couple of questions that, that people often have about Quakers. Um, one is, are Quakers Christian? And the simple answer to that is many are, but not all. Um, I said, I think earlier that there were kind of four main branches of, of Quakerism. Three of them are explicitly Christ-centered. Um, the fourth, liberal friends, friends, general conference friends, um, are theologically diverse. There are many, um, many friends who identify as Christian. Um, there are many who don't. Um, the ones who don't, um, again, there's, there's a, a pretty wide range. Um, some would identify as, as theist, as Quaker slash Buddhist, as Quaker slash Jewish, even as non-theist. Um, what binds us together is, is, uh, is some experience, some shared experience of the spirit. Um, how important is, is the Bible? How important is scripture to friends? So George Fox himself, the founder of Quakerism, um, knew scripture inside out. In fact, it was said that if every Bible in the world were destroyed, George Fox could recreate the entire thing from memory. Um, He also, and certainly among liberal friends, um, did not see scripture as the, uh, the authoritative source of religious knowledge um, or, and, and wisdom. That it was experience that is the authoritative source of religious knowledge. The early friends kind of finessed this, and um, they said that direct revelation will never contradict scripture, um, that their experience, what, what, the way they experienced um, God, they could see reflected in scripture. Um, but, that spirit did not stop speaking to humans um, shortly after Jesus's death. Um, spirit continues to speak to us. And if we find inspiration and comfort in scripture, What we need to keep in mind is that we need to read scripture with the same spirit that inspired it in the first place, that that spirit is present with us, that the same spirit that inspired the gospel writers is accessible to us, and we need to channel that spirit as we read scripture. Um, that the Christian Bible or the Jewish and Christian Bible together are not the, the only expression of uh, religious understanding, and we can learn from other faith traditions as well, and we can um, hold their holy books holy to ourselves as well. And that the Bible 
is best understood as a whole. It is very common, and I think has been for, for centuries, um, to cherry pick verses from, from scripture. Um, and with, with a diligent enough search, one can probably find a Bible verse that supports almost anything. Um, Friends, try and read scripture in a holistic sense. Um, what, what does the work as a whole teach us? And then how do the pieces fit into that? And then how can we understand um, what the prophets um, were trying to tell us? One of the things that makes it hard to talk about, you know, friends and God and, and what is Quaker theology is that Quakers don't really believe in theology. Um, there have been very few <laughs> kind of great Quaker theologians. And the one who is cited most frequently wrote in the 1600s, um, Barclay. Quakers are, I would say, suspicious of creeds, but it's actually stronger than that. Quakers reject creeds, root and branch. So, you know, there, there is no equivalent of the Apostles' Creed or the, the, the Nicene Creed or anything like that, um, certainly within liberal friends and mostly not in the other branches as well. Um, creed, there's, there's, there's issues with creeds um, as, as far as friends are concerned. Um, basically, creeds get in the way of revelation. So a creed enables spiritual laziness. That if you have a set of principles that you're supposed to believe, those are the set of principles that you believe. Um, our work is actually much harder, that we need to, to listen, to hear, to understand on our own and in community. So there's, there's an enormous amount of work <laughs> that comes with being a faithful friend um, that would be short-circuited at least to a certain degree by a creed. Um, a second issue is that creeds can close our hearts and minds. That if we know in advance what we're supposed to be hearing, that's what we're most likely to hear. And so a creed will, will block the immediacy and the richness of revelation. And finally, a creed can distort what it is that we do understand. Because if we have a revelation that is fresh, that is different, that is unique, the temptation is to slot that into an existing statement of faith. And thus to, to kind of distort it, to massage it so that it fits something that we already understand. So basically, friends see creeds as, as a dark glass between us and the spirit. Um, now, the absence of a creed does not mean that anything goes. Um, on the contrary. Um, you know, friends are, are, are deeply religious people, many of us. And it does matter what we believe. But what we believe comes from that core of revelation and then needs to be tested, needs to be cleared with our community. And Jade's going to talk a lot more about that later in the week. Um, and then finally, um, two friends, that experience of the divine is not passive. 
it leads to a life, a faithful life, an active faithful life. It is what George Fox was talking about when he said, be patterns, be examples, let your life preach. Um, and we will talk much more about that in the section on testimonies in a few days. Um, but the implication is that we grow in our understanding and then we bring that growth into the world. And it is through our life that, that our faith is, is truly tested um, and truly proved. So it all really boils down to this really very mystical personal and communal experience. Um, like I say, the way I would describe feeling the presence of God is probably different than every other person in, in this workshop, every other person at, at the gathering, every other friend in the world. We all have our, our unique um, way of perception. But what matters is that mystical experience. That's what underlies our faith and that's what underlies our practice. And that's kind of my summary of, of, of friends and God. 